This is a story of growth and evolution. In 1976, China, Tanzania and Zambia worked together to complete the 1,860.5 km railway across this vast expanse of land. Four decades have passed since then, but the changes brought by the railway are still affecting people's lives in an increasingly profound way. Zara is clear, known to everyone. The lives of people living along the route have been greatly improved. The buses cannot reach during rain season. So the only alternative at that moment is only Tazara. There are ordinary people living a great life inextricably linked with the Tazara project. This is my working place, this is my life. They are benefiting from the changes brought about in this new era. My work is very, very important. They, together with the railway builders, have brought about this miracle. On July the 14th, 1976, the railway was open to traffic. This has given the people of Tanzania and Zambia an affordable transportation option. Chag Damien, a medical doctor from Dar es Salaam, is a frequent train passenger because he takes the train to Ifakara for business. We had a booking last week but we didn't get the ticket, then we, we get booked on this, and then that's why we are. There are six commuter trains a day running in both directions between Dar es Salaam and its suburbs. A long distance train to stops in Zambia runs every Tuesday and Friday. There is rarely enough supply to meet demand, but time can be critical to a doctor. Looking at Tazara, we managed to visit the area where the car cannot pass. Without this Tazara, sometimes we'll get a lot of death because they, are not, they don't have access to go to the consultant hospitals. The route passes through a tropical savanna climate with distinct wet and dry seasons. During the rainy season, the railway becomes the only transportation option. Tazara actually is very, very important and they need to improve it so that it can save more life. Actually with the Tazara, the only problem I can see is uh, the first class and the second class is full. So we can have the longest train with much of first class and second class, which a lot of tourists, a lot of workers like us can opt for it and Tazara can earn more money as compared to third class. Mm -hmm. For passengers like doctors, travelling by rail is not only convenient and affordable, it is often enjoyable. Tazara actually is very lucky, apart from Selu Game Reserve, which we are going to cross it, but there is a range of a very green, natured Uruzungo mountains with a lot of um, animals inside there. The Sealus Game Reserve, one of the world's largest natural reserves with the most species of wildlife. For the price of a train ticket, tourists can go deep into the reserve. The railway has become popular with tourists visiting the Sealus Game Reserve. So this is it, the Sealus Game Reserve. You can drive from Dar es Salaam and get into here. But you can also use the Tazara rail to get access here to Sydney. So from here we can see elephants, lions, this park buffaloes. This reserve supports a huge number of elephants in uh, eastern and southern Africa. Lion? Oh yeah, lion. Yeah, you see the lion. It's a she, isn't it? Yeah. We messed it up for her, so now she's angry at us. Sealus Game Reserve has more of a wild and primitive feel than the well-known Serengeti and Masai Mara reserves. A new train service aimed at tourists has helped invigorate the line. Buffaloes. And we are very close to them. Yeah, they're looking at us. Yeah, they're very curious.
Salama. I've been invited to this uh, Maasai village, very close to the railway station. And um, now I'll go and meet the elder. Uh, Karim Sana. Sana. Mariako. Nzuri Sana. Uh, Maria Safari. Uh, Safi Sana. Karim Maasai village. Asante. The Maasai are a nomadic tribe in East Africa. Their primitive lifestyle creates a unique site on the railway. Niels is very curious about them. Mm -hmm. Can I try? Yeah, you can try. Nice. This is where we sleep because we are nomadic people, so it has become very easy to move. Ah, you are very tall, my friend. Yeah, I'm very tall. I'm almost, almost like, I'm like a Maasai. Yeah, for yeah. sure. You're going to be a white Maasai. <laughs> Many Maasai people who used to live by hunting now live by selling things to the tourists. I can explain. You can choose what you want. The Maasai originally migrated to the Sea of Savannah in search of a better life. Now the railway has further improved the lives of the Maasai people. Regarding Tazara, we used to sell the milk to the passengers right there. And the people has been knowing that at the Kisaki there is a place where you, we can buy plenty of fresh milk. Zara is clear, known to everyone. The people at this village in most cases used to travel in other villages. They go to Mangula where there is a very big market for milk. So that uh, they travel by Tazara and they come back by Tazara. Tazara has got a big contribution toward improving. <laughs> The railway has enabled the Maasai people to develop tourism without harming the ecology, an unforeseen bonus. Although it has been over 40 years since the Tazara project was launched, the railway can still surprise people. Many local people, like the Maasai, have found the railway to both support their livelihood and fulfill their dreams. The station platform comes alive whenever a train arrives. This is Mbeya station on Tanzania's border. When the train comes by twice a week, local resident Flola Alom comes here to sell roasted bananas. Thank you. Flola makes a long trip to buy bananas on a regular basis to sell to train passengers at double her cost. She's been doing this for years to supplement her income. <laughs> In spite of her husband's objections to her activities, Flola persists. This is rare in the male-dominated African society. More and more women along the route are like Flola. They no longer rely entirely on their husbands for their family's income, instead having the courage to make money with their own hands. For these African women, the railway represents freedom. Children living along the route also earn a little money from the train. When a train arrives, they'd run out of their homes to sell fruit to the passengers.
Saidi is mainly responsible for ensuring proper operation of the signaling and communication equipment at the Makambako station. This is for the communication. This equipment, how old is that? Is that back from the 1960s, 70s? 2002. Oh, 2002? Yes. This is the truck. So what we are doing here, we are servicing this portion so that the train will pass through and safe. All the office equipment carries Chinese labels. Can you read what's on those boxes? Because this is in Chinese. Yeah, every equipment from Chinese, we have the manual and they translate from Chinese to, to English. Can you read some Chinese as well? Uh, not really, but uh, I have some words. Can you speak something? Uh, Chinese? Yeah, ni yeah. hao. I know Bukachi, yeah. Several years ago, Saidi Mavura was sent by railway authority to study railway operation in China. He still carries the certificate on him every day. This is my identity there when we have been in Tianjin, showing us the direction. I remember that I've been there for six months, but I saw, I learned, and I. I experienced a lot of from Chinese. After the Tazara project was completed, Saidi moved closer to the railway for convenience. Jack Chen, this one. Like most African people, he enjoys watching Chinese kung fu films. Yeah. You like kung fu films? He's much better in martial art. <laughs> Geographical conditions formally hindered Makambako's development. But the railway has brought many jobs to the people living along the route. Saidi is very grateful that he now has a good job. Her name is Joha. She is studying in high school. So here you live with uh, how many people live here? Uh, my son, my wife, and my daughter. She is my wife. So this is now a nicer house? Yeah, at least for my family, it's nice. And you have the railway just outside? Yeah, just outside. Just outside? Yeah, the railway. very near to the railway station. You know I'm a railway man, so it's better to watch even the security and the safety of, of the rail. I have been working here for 11 years. I like this job and I expect it to work it more because this is my working place, this is my life. In Makambako, we meet a Rwandan youth named Emmy Marion, who has been shipping his corn by rail. Four months ago, we tried to use the trucks from Lusaka to Kigali, and it's been taking more than two weeks. So from here, we use the regional logistics, and then we use the trucks straight to Rwanda. So we only cross one border, Rusumo, then we are there. So we have to make sure everything is moving fast and in a huge quantity so we can save people. The freight train shortens transport time, greatly benefiting local business. Trucks takes three days from Lusaka to here. And then from here to Kigali is another two days, so if roughly five days. So five days, it's not big, you can't compare five days to two weeks. Emmy Marion studied at Jiangnan University in Wuxi, Jiangsu province. <laughs> 
After graduation, he returned home to apply what he had learned. So, um, from there, outside, railway, you me, thou jelly. From here, trucks come here. Jiga Yumi, Hayo soya, Hayo vitamin, protein. We make the food for Xiaopengyo and uh, breastfeeding women. You are looking for the quality? Yeah. Tanzania and Zambia are located in the heart of East Africa. In addition to providing a reliable transportation route, the railway promotes improvement in regional industries. It is a lifeline running from East Africa to South Central Africa. This is Nakonde Station on the border of Tanzania and Zambia, a cargo transfer station. The train brings large quantities of goods which young and old locals come to help unload. We are loading. Malahaba. So we are loading now. Yeah, we are loading. Okay, this looks very busy. Yeah. So these are all the bags they get from there. Yes. No, 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 me, me. <laughs> They're feeling me. Yes. That's the scale, so they. Yes. Sorry. Then, that one is the loading machine. That's the road loading machine. Yeah. And then when they scale, they pay according to weight. Yes. And then they put it on the... On the wagon. Okay. You, the customer. Oh, no, no. At Nakonde Station, the experienced supervisor ensures that cargo is loaded and unloaded in an orderly manner. 0745. Uh, two, two down and one up. Okay, okay, I'll be in touch. My name is Mumba Potfa. I'm the station foreman on duty. Uh, we have got three station foremen. These are the two important uh, agents or officers that do check the goods that are going out of Zambia. Same price with the goods that are coming from Tanzania, the same price on the other side. The work seems the same every day, even boring. But Mumba sees it as more than a job, and more like national liberation. Because of the appetite which was happening in South Africa. So we were not using the route for any exportation of copper from Zambia to European countries. So they had to build this line. So China came on board and they helped us to build this line. Without China, this line was not going to be there because they saw the topography, so they said they would take so many years to build, but China took just a period of about 10 years. Tazara was launched in October 1970 and completed in July 1976, winning praise for the Chinese people. This allowed copper from Zambia to be shipped via the railway to coastal ports and then to the world and greatly increased the economic independence of Tanzania and Zambia. My name is Amza. I come from Tanzania. I'm working for Chatedat. This is my work. I like my work. China is my friend. I love China, I love Tanzania, I love Zambia. I'm Tanzanian. Tanzanian is a good country, Tanzanian is good. 
Nchi iyo mashu uri jina witwa Tanzania 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 na kupenda kwa moyo wote Nila lapona kuota wewe ni amkaponi eri mama e Tanzania Tanzania na kupenda kwa moyo wote Times have changed since Tazara was completed and other modes have opened up for transporting copper. But the railway still plays an important role in the economic life of the people along the route through Tanzania and Zambia. This railway represents the wisdom of millions of Chinese and African people. It is also a guarantee for continued Sino-African friendship. Nine, the annual guy, 